World War II, the Pacific Theater. Throughout the early years of the war, Japan advanced almost unchecked throughout the Pacific. They took the territories of Hong Kong, French Indochina, Malaya, Burma, Thailand, and half of China on the Asian mainland. They also took the islands of Formosa, the Dutch East Indies, Guam, Wake, the Solomon Islands, and two islands in the Aleutian chain, which were part of Alaska. When Japan attacked the Philippines, 80,000 American Marines and Filipinos were able to hold off Japanese, Japanese invaders for four months. Eventually, they were overrun. When the islands were taken, General Douglas MacArthur evacuated to Australia, saying, I shall return. In response to the invasion of the Philippines and the attack on Pearl Harbor, the United States would raid Tokyo. Led by Colonel James Doolittle, 16 B-52 bombers took off from the aircraft carrier Hornet and bombed the city of Tokyo. In May of 1942, the Japanese Navy advanced towards Australia with the hope of invading the continent. The American and Australian navies met the Japanese in the Coral Sea. For the first time, this naval battle was fought entirely with carrier-based aircraft. The Japanese won the battle tactically, sinking more ships, but lost strategically as they were forced to turn back to Japan from Australia. In June of 1942, 110 Japanese ships made their way towards Midway Island. This island would be a strategic staging ground for them to invade Hawaii. Admiral Chester Nimitz learned of this plan and set a trap for the Japanese. The Japanese ships were outnumbered by more than four to one. The Americans attacked the ships with torpedo bombers. Japan lost four aircraft carriers, a cruiser, and 322 planes. This battle marked the first time that Japan was defeated. MacArthur planned to use a strategy of island hopping in the war in the Pacific. He would bypass Japanese strongholds and take weaker islands, then build airstrips there and use these to cut off the Japanese that had been left behind. In May of 1942, the first American land offensive was fought at Guadalcanal. 19,000 Marines stormed the beach, the battle lasted for more than six months, and one-third of all Americans were casualties. Eventually, the Americans would win the Battle of Guadalcanal in Florida. For the first time, Japan was defeated on land. In October of 1944, the American military continued their offensive into the Empire of Japan. 178,000 Allied troops and 738 ships were sent to Leyte Island in the Philippines. General MacArthur announced, I have returned. This battle was the first time that the Japanese would use kamikaze tactics, and their entire fleet was involved. 424 kamikazes, which means divine wind in Japanese, sank 16 ships. In the battle, Japan lost three battleships, four aircraft carriers, 13 cruisers, and 400 planes in addition to the kamikaze planes. This battle was significant because from this point forward, the Japanese Navy would play a very minor role in the war. The island of Iwo Jima was strategically important for the Americans because it was needed as a base so that heavy bombers could reach Japan. The island, Iwo Jima, which means Volcano Island, was heavily defended by the Japanese. There were 20,700 troops who had dug into trenches, caves, and tunnels. More than 6,000 Marines died in the battle, and only 200 Japanese survived. On April 12, 1945, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt had a stroke and passed away. Vice President Harry S. Truman took the oath and became president. The Battle of Okinawa was significant because it was Japan's last defensive outpost before the main islands. Japan would use 1,900 kamikaze attacks in this battle. They sank 30 ships, damaged 300, and killed more than 5,000 American soldiers. By June 22, 1945, more than 7,000 Americans were dead. 110,000 Japanese died, including two generals who committed suicide. Many of the Okinawan residents had been brainwashed by the Japanese into believing that the American invaders would murder children and rape women. As a result, many Okinawans committed suicide as the American invaders moved through the island. This island was significant because it gave the Americans a taste of what it would be like if they were to invade the Japanese home islands. With the completion of the Manhattan Project, the United States had created the first atomic bombs. This weapon was the most powerful that had ever been created in history. Many scientists 
were concerned as to whether or not the United States should drop the bomb. Leo Island led a group of scientists in a position not to drop the bomb. He recommended warning Japan that we owned the weapon and then testing it somewhere near Japan so that they could see its amazing power. The interim committee was created to discuss this issue and led by J. Robert Oppenheimer, who was another of the scientists on the Manhattan Project. Oppenheimer's group argued that only dropping a bomb on a city would convince Japan that the United States was willing to use this weapon and convince them to surrender. Another fear was that if we warned them prior to dropping the bomb, the test might be a dud, or that the Japanese might shoot down the delivery plane or even possibly move prisoners into the test area. Eventually, the committee was swayed by these arguments and suggested that we drop the bomb. President Truman now had a very difficult decision to make, whether or not to use the atomic bomb against the civilian population in Japan. The reason that Truman eventually decided to drop the bomb was that he felt it would save American lives by not invading Japan. It was estimated that more than a million Americans would die if the home, home islands were invaded. They also felt that the weapon needed to be used to justify its tremendous cost. Finally, by using the atomic bomb, the United States would have the advantage over the Soviet Union in reshaping the post-war world because the Soviets would realize that the United States had this ability, and they did not. On July 25, 1945, President Truman decided to use the bomb. August 6, 1945, a B-29 bomber named the Enola Gay dropped an atomic bomb nicknamed Little Boy on the city of Hiroshima. Forty-three seconds later, the city was gone. Japanese leaders still refused to surrender because the United States wanted them to have an unconditional surrender where the emperor would resign. This is a picture of the Enola Gay. This is a model from the museum of what the first atomic bomb looked like. This is another model from the Hiroshima Museum. On the left is what the city looked like prior to the bombing. On the right, what it looked like after. This is an aerial photograph taken of Hiroshima before the bomb on top and after the bomb on the bottom. You can see that all the black dots, which were buildings and roofs, have disappeared. A few days later, on August 9, 1945, the city of Nagasaki was attacked. A bomb nicknamed Fat Man was dropped, leveling half of the city. Within a year, more than 200,000 people had died. On September 2, 1945, Emperor Hirohito surrendered. This is a model of the Fat Man bomb. Here you can see another aerial photograph. The one below depicts where the ground zero for the bomb was and the immense destruction. You can see that there is still an outline of the foundation of the soccer stadium, but little else remains. In February of 1945, before his death, President Roosevelt attended the Yalta Conference, where he met with Prime Minister Churchill and Stalin of the Soviet Union. At this meeting, they agreed to form the United Nations. The Soviet Union also agreed to join the war against Japan. The Soviet Union guaranteed free elections in Poland as well, something that they would not follow through with. The United Nations first met in San Francisco in April of 1945. By June, they'd agreed on a charter. Eventually, the United Nations would move to New York City. The General Assembly would be made up of all member nations. The Security Council, which would have veto power, would be made up of five permanent nations, the United States, Great Britain, China, France, and the Soviet Union. The other six members would rotate through the General Assembly. Each member of the Security Council could veto any resolution passed by the rest of the Assembly. In Potsdam, Germany, Truman, Stalin, and Churchill met again to discuss the disarmament of Germany. They also discussed war criminal trials. Germany would be divided into four sectors, with the United States, France, Britain, and the Soviet Union each controlling one sector. A problem arose in that the city of Berlin was located in the Soviet sector. All four nations realized that they needed to have some say in what happened in the capital city, so that city was also divided into four sectors. After the war, 23 nations tried Nazi war criminals at Nuremberg, Germany. The location of this trial was ironic in that the Nuremberg Laws were those that were used to discriminate and suppress Jews at the beginning of the war. Twelve of the 22 Nazi defendants were sentenced to death. Most were sentenced to prison. Other Nazis who had escaped were tried later. General MacArthur oversaw the occupation of Japan. 
He tried Japanese prisoners of war and sentenced seven to death. After the war, MacArthur completely reformed Japanese society. He introduced the free market and also wrote a new constitution with women's suffrage and basic freedoms. This constitution is still used today and is known as the MacArthur Constitution.